welcome 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 so glad to see all of you on a saturday i was just looking at my hair i realized it's a total mess so it's definitely a saturday um i talked about yesterday i've been babysitting my niece's dog um he's nine months old he's a golden retriever his name is goose i was gonna see if i could find a picture because i have like a million pictures of him um I call him the neighborhood watch because he just sits at the window and he looks, he looks out the window. He's super cute, but, um, he's been having some tummy troubles the last, um, couple of nights. There he is again, just sitting in the window. It's cute. Um, so yeah, we were up every two hours for the last two nights. So hopefully he gets all of that under control. I've been doing all the things that um, one of my friends who used to work for a vet, she was a vet tech for like 12 years. She's been telling me about um, giving him rice and pumpkin and bananas and hopefully he'll get better soon because <laughs> it's, it's a lot being up every two hours. All right, so today we are going to talk about blog tech. This is something that really trips a lot of people up. And it's kind of unfortunate because it doesn't have to. You don't need a whole website to have a blog. There are plenty of free blogging platforms that you can use. Um, so you don't need to have your own domain name. You don't need to invest any money up front. You can just try it out and see if it works. So I wanted to go over a few of them today just to show you kind of what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first one that I want to talk about is WordPress. WordPress has a couple of different versions. Um, so some people talk about WordPress as a website builder, which it is. Um, but there's also part of WordPress, which is a blog website. So I think WordPress.com is the word site builder. But WordPress.org might be the blogging. Yeah, so WordPress.org is the WordPress um, blogging builder, which is what I started with. And then I moved to WordPress.com, which is really just building your own blog. And to be quite honest, it was kind of expensive. I think that... I didn't want their base plan. I think it was the next sub up, but I paid like $300 a year for my blog to be hosted on WordPress. But the advantage of it was it was super easy to use. Um, and my website was really fast. One of my friends, after about a year of paying for it, I was complaining because it was going to renew and it was going to cost me another $300. So one of my friends convinced me to use Bluehost for a while, which is a different hosting website. You can use a WordPress website, but it's hosted on Bluehost instead of on WordPress. And so I did that and it was a lot cheaper. It was only like $20 a year, um, but it was so slow. I hated it. And then they deleted my website like three times and it turned into a total mess. So I like WordPress a lot, especially if you're using uh, Word Word WordPress as the host. But, you know, a drawback is it's expensive. Plus, if you're not interested in building websites and you're not very techy, that's probably not the first place that you should start. I'll say that. Um, I use Wix right now. This is actually my Wix page that I'm logged into. This is my INFJ woman blog. So I wanted to explain too, my website actually has two different parts to it. So you can see this is the main website, which is infjwoman.com. And then my blog is actually blog.infjwoman.com. And that is because I have this, uh, this program called lead pages, which is up here, um, which is very expensive. And I would not suggest that somebody just getting started should use lead pages. Um, that's, it was, I think it's like a hundred dollars a month. So definitely don't start out with that. The reason that I have a subscription to it is because it, it loads incredibly fast. 
Um, so it, and it's really mainly used for like landing pages. So like, um, um, I was going to show you the, the, um, the blog school page. So this is a, a lead pages landing page. And as you can see, it loaded really fast. So that's part of the advantage of lead pages. That's also why it's very expensive. Um, but what I was wanted to talk to you about is my blog page. So this is actually my blog page where all of my blog posts, are, well, the vast majority of them are. There are a couple of them on lead pages, but the vast majority of them are on here. This is a Wix website. So that's this one. And then my podcast website, The Quiet Ones, is on here. And then there's a couple of other ones that I have um, that are mine, some that I've built for other people. Um, but basically, I really, really like Wix. Um, it's really easy to use. They have a lot of uh, website templates. Um, so you don't have to really design your own website. I was going to show you this one. This is another blog that I've started writing. Um, and it's very simple, a very simple website, right? So you just have a main page that kind of talks a little bit about your blog. It um, has a little blurb about who you are. And then maybe you have a subscribe button because email is super important. And we're going to talk about that later. Um, uh, I forget which day it is. I think it's like Tuesday. I think we're going to talk about that. But um, it's just a really simple page and then you have a blog page and that's where all of your blog posts are, right? And then you can have an about page if you want to, which I had one and then there's a contact page, but you don't even need all of that. And then I think that my journey page just has like my Instagram on it. So it's not, you can have a really simple website, I guess is what I'm saying. And then just really focus on writing your blog. So, and, um, so hosting for Wix, I think it costs about a hundred dollars a year, maybe 120 now. Um, and what I like about Wix too, is they have monthly plans. So if you just want to do a monthly plan, you can do that. WordPress didn't have a monthly plan when I was using them. They may now, but I don't, um, uh, they didn't before. So that's all if you want to build a website. If you're not interested in building a website, that's totally fine too. There are tons of other options. Um, I actually started some of my first blogs on Blogger and it's super easy to use. You get basic blogs. Um, you can buy a domain if you want to. It looks like now you can integrate ads so you can earn some money. Um, it's just really a basic platform to use that's super easy. Another one to use is Substack. Um, also very easy to use. I think I actually have one, but what is it called? That could be, that could be the trick. Uh, but it's really basic. There is no, um, nothing for you to build or anything. You just have to put Oh, I guess that must not be what it is because it's asking me to get started. Um, but basically, it's just really easy to use. You can see from some of the the people who use it. Um, if I could find one, like, I don't even know who these people are. I'm just looking. Uh, but see, it's really basic, easy to use. All you have to do is just right basically and then they have an option to monetize it so you can see how some of them are locked so then people who pay you can read everything that's locked and then you can have some that are unlocked but you don't have to do that there's um you could turn that off or not turn it on i guess um so that is substack blogger we talked about medium is another option i used to have articles on medium too um it's kind of the same way, just very basic. Um, and I think Medium may have some monetization too. 
but you don't really need to build anything or do anything to get started. You just need to start writing. Um, so those are the ones that I came up with really quickly, the ones that I've used in the past. There are a couple of other options too, depending on um, what your blog is about, I guess I would say. So um, there are some social media sites that have the option for long form content. I know it's something that Twitter is talking about, but they don't have the option yet. But if Twitter is a place that you like to hang out, maybe Twitter is an option for you. Um, LinkedIn is an option as well. I would only say LinkedIn would be a major option if something that you're writing about is like about careers, maybe about finding your purpose. Um, maybe you want to talk about business or uh, professional development or something like that. Really, if your blog has to do with something around business or careers, LinkedIn would be a good option. So if you looked at if you look at LinkedIn, you can see all of the posts here. Um, but if you filter it by articles, then you can see that I have some articles on here. So in those articles, they're really just blog posts. As you can see, they're really simple blog posts. You can add pictures if you want to. You can add links. I have links in there. Um, yeah, so it works really good. Actually, you don't need a lot to get started there. You just need to set up an account, which is free. Um, and Google actually searches these. So your blog post can still show up on Google. Plus you're getting all the exposure from LinkedIn as well. Um, so LinkedIn is a pretty good option too. I just realized today actually that Facebook has an option for articles. I don't know if this is new or if I'm just slow because this is my Facebook account and <laughs> I went Actually, I was looking for notes because it used to be in the past that you could use notes for articles, but then I saw that they had an article option and I don't know if this is just because my account has 16,000 followers um, or if it's an option for everybody. I don't know, honestly, um, but there is an option to create articles there. So, you know, they're calling it an article, but it could be a blog post as well. Um, so I'll definitely use that. So if you, if, if you're not following me on Facebook yet, you should, because <laughs> I'll be using that for sure. Um, and you could use it as your own blog, right? You don't need to have another website and that would help draw more people to, to your, um, your Facebook as well. So then another option is Instagram. And like I said, depending, you know, you don't have to use all of these options. You could just pick the one that works the most for you. Um, Instagram and Instagram is a lot more flexible for how many words that you can write. So I've seen some people write whole blog posts in, in their um, description. So obviously you would need like some sort of a picture or graphic or something. Um, but you could basically write a whole blog post where this is. I don't, I know that they do have a character limit. I think it's like really high though. I don't remember exactly what it is, but they don't have to be, you know, not every blog, blog post has to be 5,000 words. I think most of mine are 700 to a thousand usually there's only a few that are more than that so um there is a limit but like i said it's pretty high for instagram um so those are the options that i know about those are the ones that make the most sense to me the ones that i've used um and the ones that i like too i love facebook i like instagram um, I'm not that sold on LinkedIn and mostly for me because I don't use LinkedIn very much. Um, but I like the article feature. I think it's really nice. Um, and like I said, I've used Substack too and Medium. Um, and then of course Wix. If I had to pick one, if I had to start over again, like from day one, 
if I didn't have any money at all, like not even $20 in my account that I could spend, I would probably start with Substack or Medium because they're super easy to set up. You can monetize them. You can add your own domain name later if you want to. Um, And then I would start also with Instagram. But I know we're going to talk about social media a little bit later, but I'll tell you just a little bit. I'll give you a little bit of a preview for social media. We talked before about your ideal customer, right? We gave them a name, talked about them, and I told you your ideal customer is really a past version of you. So when you're thinking about what social media you should be on or what website you should have, I think about what I like to do, where I like to spend time, where was I spending time, you know, when I was at the worst part of my life, even back then, which wasn't too long ago for me, it was like 2015. Um, I was spending a lot of time on Instagram. I liked Instagram a lot. So when I thought about starting my blog and my social media, the first thing that I went to was Instagram because it made the most sense for me. But if you are a little bit older than me, Facebook might be the right platform for you because Facebook kind of has a little bit older audience. I'm sort of on the young side of the people who really like Facebook. I I don't know. I think it's probably part of the nostalgia for me. (laughs) Facebook is kind of like where it all started and I like having everything in one place. Plus Facebook owns Instagram. So they work together very well. If you're going to post on Instagram, you might as well post on Facebook. Um, that's why those two were important for me. Twitter has never really been very important for me. I've used it and then I haven't used it for a while. And then I went back to using it and then I didn't really use it for a while. Um, I've been playing around with it now, mostly because there's so many people talking about it. And I like to stay as far away from politics as I can get. So leaving politics out of this conversation, what I like about Twitter is that there's so many people on Twitter right now. (laughs) And I also like this. I've had five or six people come to me who know that I work in digital marketing. Some of them people that I work with, some of them like my bosses at, at my day job, I guess I should specify. They have told me that Twitter is in the process of blowing up and they're going to file bankruptcy and it's really just a really bad thing and you need to close down our account there because there's no point in being there because it's just it's a mess and it's just going to keep getting worse and I think that's really funny because my opinion is and what I've seen in the statistics of Twitter a lot of people feel that way about Twitter but here's the funny thing Everybody wants a front row seat to the meltdown, right? (laughs) So what's happening is there are more people using Twitter right now than there ever have been in the past. So that, to me, sounds like an opportunity to use it. And maybe it will melt down. That's fine if it does. There's been a lot of social media platforms that have melted down or have been shut down for some reason or another. But I feel like social media is something that you should use and take advantage of while it's here and while it's doing well, right? So if there are more people that are using Twitter than ever have been, regardless of how you feel politically, it would be a good idea for your business to have a presence on a platform that everybody's using and everybody's talking about right now, right? At least that's how I see it from a business perspective. So having said all of that, I play with Twitter a little bit too, just to see what what happens. Um, For me, I like social media. So I like to have accounts in all these different platforms. 
It's not necessary though for your business. You don't need to have one on every platform. You can just pick one that you like and focus on that one. Okay, so this kind of turned into a conversation about social media. It's really supposed to be more about blogging. Um, but there are a lot of options really for hosting your blog. You don't have to have your own website if you don't want to, if you're not ready for that. You can always start on Instagram or start on Facebook using articles. You can start on LinkedIn using articles. You could you can start start on Blogger or Medium or Substack. You, and you can move to your own website later. Now, a lot of people worry about moving a lot of content and stuff like that. I've done it multiple times. I've moved my website. As you can see, my website is in two different pieces right now. Um, and I have moved from WordPress to Bluehost, back to WordPress, and then to lead pages. And then, and then I moved to Wix too. And I feel like I'm leaving out a couple of things there. But I've moved quite a bit, right? And in my day job, working in digital marketing, part of what I do is build websites for other companies. So I've moved websites for other companies as well. And it is kind of an, um, it's can be a bit of work, but it's not the end of the world, right? It's something that you can tackle when you have time to do that and when it makes sense for you. You also don't have to move everything, right? I have content on Substack. I have content on Medium. I have content on like blogs on LinkedIn. There will be some on Facebook in the future. Um, so it doesn't all have to be in one place, I guess is what I'm saying. You can start in one place and then move to a different place once you have your own website. All you have to do is link back to your website and people can still find all of your content where you're currently writing content. So the moral of the story is don't let the tech side of blogging get in your way. It doesn't need to be complicated or overwhelming. It can be something that's easy and fun. The best thing, the best thing would be for you to focus on the part of blogging that you like. If you like building websites, then you should absolutely build a website. If you don't, that's okay. You don't need to build a website. Um, you don't need to get stuck there. Don't let that be something that holds you back from starting your blog. I know that we talked a lot about tech today and a little bit about social media, um, but we really only had time to talk through the first step of the process. There's so many different steps. Um, there's probably five or six steps that you need to set up your blog, even if you're just using um, LinkedIn or Facebook or Substack or Medium. There are things that you need to do to drive people to your website. There are things that you need to do to make sure that Google is indexing um, your blog posts so that people can find you, right? There's so much more that we can talk about. And that's why I created my program, which is called Blog School, because I want to be able to share all of that stuff with you. I want you to have everything in the right place so that your blog is set up for success from day one. In the program, we'll have the opportunity to dive into every single one of those things so that I can walk you through exactly what you need to make sure that people can find you, that your blog is set up the correct way, um, and that you are creating the type of content that's gonna draw your ideal client to you. And then I'm also gonna show you how to promote it on social media. Um, and I'm gonna talk about more in depth of what we talked about with different people or on different platforms. Um, we'll talk about age ranges, you know, demographics, and then how to use each platform um, the best way, how to use them the most efficiently. And then I'll also share with you too, how I manage all of my social media and how it only takes me about an hour every week to post on four or five different platforms and in only an hour a week. And some, I used to do five posts a day in only about an hour a week which is crazy when you think about it. 
Um, it's not quite that level in the beginning, or it's not quite that level now, but if I was starting over from day one, it would be at that level, because that's really what you need. Um, that's what you need to build a big audience, but it doesn't have to take you tons and tons of time. It's super easy um, when you know how to do it and when you know what tools to use when you have them all in the right place. All right. So make sure that you check out blog school, um, go to infjwoman.com slash blog school. It's a brand new program that I have, but it's only going to be open for a limited time. Um, it will be closing this Friday. So you just have a few more days to look at it. If you're interested in joining, make sure that you go check it out and that you get signed up. Um, all right, so we're going to be here every single day this week up until Friday, and we're going to talk about, tomorrow we're going to talk about where's your audience, uh, Monday we're going to talk about more about social media, um, Tuesday we're going to talk about email, and then the rest of the week we're going to talk about um, how to make money without doing live launches, um, and then we're going to have a post-it note party. And we're going to talk about the strategy to outline your blog so that you are set up and ready to go from day one. All right, that's what I have today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you back here tomorrow. Same time, same place.